any essay program should uh, strive for a lot of objectives but most prominent among them these two objectives or these two things are quite contradictory to each other one is that you should have this ability or it should help you develop this ability where you can write on any as a topic no matter how strange or alien that topic it is to you so even if you have no familiarity with the topic you should still be able to write on that that kind of an attitude your essay program should develop in you on the other hand where the essay program should also help you prepare on certain topics which should be similar to the kind of topics which are being asked in the essay paper so that on the day of your exam you definitely when it, when you see the question paper you feel okay oh, oh there are three or four topics which are similar to the kind of questions or similar to the kind of essays which i had written in my essay program so these two different objectives i try to achieve in my program and they're quite contradictory to each other as i said on the one hand we are expecting that the topics would be completely alien to you you'll have no idea about them and on the other hand we are trying to have some essays some essays which are similar to the kind of essays which you would be writing on your exam day so how do i bring together these two different things together apart from these two things there are many other objectives also for test series but right now my focus is on these two things so that is why when i provide you an essay program uh, and when i provide you the tests in those in those program then there's no choice which i am providing you so this is there are six tests for example this module of six tests if you take in this six essay test module every essay test would have two topics and thus in total this would have 12 essay topics now these 12 topics i have chosen not in any random day like not in one go but over a very long period of time around 2 3 years i have taken to figure out the, these 12 topics and it's always an evolving process so uh, now if i read some good philosophy or a novel or a book or and i feel like okay this is a thought which can be asked in the upsc it has some potential then i will pick it up and insert into those 12 topics and one of the one which is uh, which which is not as suitable as that would be removed out so this task of elimination is very difficult for me but i have to do that and what has happened over a period of time that these 12 topics the collection of this topic has become very refined after every session this has become every very refined so some of the topics are very old like 3 years old and some topics are new like a couple of weeks ago now i've been uh, i don't want to brag about it but uh, yeah somewhat it is true that i've been uh, lucky in uh, foreseeing or at least uh, discussing the kind of topics which are asked in the paper and there is a track record of that you can see on my channel also so like uh, this topic uh, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication a very similar topic i had already discussed on my youtube channel before this exam took place and a topic uh, ships don't sink because of the water around them a very similar topic i had discussed on my youtube channel before that and even after that uh, even this year if you talk about uh, that their top uh, this year it was said that the topics are out of uh, the blue but still there were there were some topics which were very similar to the kind of ones which i had asked in my essay program like uh, this topic your perception of me is a reflection of you my reaction to you is an awareness of me very similar to a topic which i had asked i can't mention the topic it's i still retained it in this program and uh, real is rational and uh, uh, even this topic what is research but a blind date with knowledge and uh, the last topic also they, that uh, there are better practices to best practices all these topics had something in common at least something in common with the topics which i had discussed and the model answers and the hints which were given to the students a big portion of that could have been used in these essays so uh, one thing i am very sure of is this this that some of the topics would be repeated and uh, how it happens is that um, maybe there is this intuition of mine is going in the right way uh, year after year that's one reason and the other is that i have exposure to these two different disciplines sociology on the one hand and english literature on the other hand sociology i have read and studied for and taught for many years uh, many years in fact 
I wrote, I had that as an optional also in UPSC, and I taught I taught that also. I see made hundreds of I made many videos of that in my channel also. On the other hand, this Eng English literature discipline where I've done masters and I'm doing PhD also, and day in and day out we do a lot of uh, criticism and read. Uh, prose, poetry, and about philosophical movements and literary movements. So, uh, I have got that exposure to these two disciplines that help me figure out okay, what are the most possible places for frame which are very popular these days, which are which have got a lot of currency these days, and from where UPSC might ask some questions. So, once I fe I feel that okay, there is this thought or there is this movement which I'm reading which has some potential to be asked in UPSC. Which is very prominent, so that I condense into some topic, and that topic I provide to the student. So these twelve topics, which I would be providing to you, or the larger uh, set of it, the eighteen questions I have been providing to you, have been taken from these. Uh, with a, after a lot of research, a lot of thought process has gone behind the selection of those topics, and thus I don't want my students to skip any of those topics when they write the essays. So uh, if the, uh, in case I provide them the choice, what happens is this, a student is most likely to write on a topic to which he has already created some kind of uh, familiarity. And uh, this way he's never able to grow or come out of his comfort zone. And also he's not able to develop more content. And um, these 12 topics, as I said, as I said they are like uh, 12 different fishing nets for me. And uh, with my intuition or wisdom or uh, my exposure to these different disciplines and how I, I interpret the patterns of essay paper over the last few years, I try to figure out where the maximum traffic is of the essay topics of the, of the past, present, and of the future possibilities. I try to see where these maximum traffic is generating of the topics. And there I throw these 12 topics, like 12 different fishing nets. So at least some of the topics which would occur on the exam day would definitely be caught in these 12 topics. And thus, I don't want you to miss any of these. I don't want to give you 64 topics and say Ki, in 64 topics, miss Aiga, because I'm sure that no student can write 64 topics and no one can definitely revise those 64 topics on an exam day. And if you just keep writing on, on the topic which you think is better or which is of uh, your choice or uh, which, to which you have some kind of comfort zone, then that is not going to serve the purpose. That is why in my essay program, there is no choice given to you. And you have to mandatorily write on the two topics which I provide to you. And that's it. So uh, what you can do, one thing obviously which I can say, I would say that you can join my program. But even if you can't join my program, and if you have joined somewhere else, then what you can do is don't depend too much on exercising this uh, this uh, this choice. When you have provided the question paper, when you get the question paper in your hand, then say to yourself, even before looking into the question paper, that okay, I'll be look, I'll be uh, attempting the question number one and five, irrespective of what they are, whether I like them or not, I would attempt on them. So at least this would help you come out of the, your comfort zone on the one hand, and, and possibly you may also end up writing on a topic to which uh, which is somewhat new to you, and thus may uh, increase the corpus of philosophical ideas which are there residing in your brain. See, remember this thing that an essay program uh, is the primary purpose of an essay test is not to tell you your score. What is your most possible score? Though we all want to know that score, uh, but that and that is that is a goal for an essay program. But a more important goal of an essay program is that your score increases. You are basically joining joining an, an essay program not just to know your score, but to increase your score, so that when you write on the final day, your essay your essay performance is much better. Uh, it's better than a good decent margin than the kind of performance you delivered in your test series. So every time you write an essay test, you should uh, in, have some increment. You should have some increase in the corpus of those philosophical ideas resident in your thought processes. 
And so that's what I would say that uh, keep writing essays which are beyond the periphery of your comfort zone and uh, they will help you in both these two goals. And on the final day of your exam, if you uh, get the question paper, you would know you, that, that you have that ability that even if you step on a question to which you have no familiarity, even then you will be able to deal with it uh, in a fair good manner. So that's it for now. And uh, I can end it here. Uh, that's it. So, and see this, as I was telling you, this English literature to which I belong uh, institutionally as of now. Uh, see, we, we have read all those father figures of uh, essay writing, prose writing. We have read all those figures. Uh, it was Francis Bacon, Charles Lem, uh, Richard Steele, and Hazlitt, and so on. And even the 21st century prose writers we have read. So we know about these things in a lot in detail, though it's another thing that the writers whom I mentioned just now, they are, they've been very much obsolete. It's been, they've been, uh, they've been, they're used to write like in 15th or 16th centuries and we don't consider them now anymore. Uh, their way of writing, we write in a different way these days. But the point which I want to make is that this there is this uh, advantage of having this exposure to this field and all these different movements which we read in literature. Now, suppose we know that in English literature, there's a very big movement called Romantic Movement, now which, which was there in 19th century, which was, was there for around 40, 50 years. Now, what was the dominant thought of these movements? If I start teaching you the, these movements or say any other movement of 21st century or 20th century, it would take a lot of time. What I do in my essay program is that I convert the central thought of these into some topic, or at least what I would do, assimilate their ideas in the model answer, or maybe during the course of my essay discussion with you, like one-to-one -one essay discussion, I will tell you those certain things about them so that you also can get some idea about this discipline, like what the core idea and the core philosophy or the core th or the prominent thoughts or the um, undercurrents are in these disciplines. So. And so that on the day, exam day, you can write in those manners. An essay is a very different thing than GS answers, GS2, 3, uh, GS, especially GS2 and GS3. It's very different. It may have some similarity with ethics paper, but it is very different from GS2 and GS3 and GS1. Um, and I want you to understand this thing. And uh, so that's it for now. I'll see you some other day on a similar discussion. Good luck.